Ladies and gentlemen, it is 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. It is the 18th day of November 2012, and this is the Torch Metal Show, brought to you by Deep Bellum On Air and Torch Entertainment. I am your host, uh, Torch of Torch Entertainment, infamous fame, whatever you want to call it. And I'm only half awake at this point in time, but that's how it should be. For those of you that listened to me last time, please excuse my voice. It's not doing what I wanted to do, but what are you going to do, right? So, um, yeah. Without further ado, let's go ahead and just get this started with a good old song. Let me find out what I can do for you people. One moment, please. Alright, now that I have my music up, I don't know what I want to play, so we're just going to put something on here, start this off uh, nice and fast. So here we go. I apologize, folks. It's being stupid over here. Give me just a second. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, let's go ahead and get into this. We're going to play some uh, some very much brand new In Search of Sight to start this off. So this is Mr. Clean by In Search of Sight off of the new album, album Entanglement. You can buy it off iTunes, Amazon, Bandcamp, a uh, high quality CD off of the band. Just get a hold of them at facebook.com slash In Search of Sight. And here we go. Correction, we're not going to play new in search of sight because I can't find it on here. Instead, we'll play some razor blade dolls. This is... This is The Wrists by the razor blade dolls. Enjoy it and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. Here we go.
Dolls from here in Dallas, Texas, with their song. Uh, that was what was that? That was the wrist off of their debut album, which you can still find at shows, which is uh, the best place to find stuff at. Obviously, uh, you can catch them live October seventh, which is two weeks from now at the Real Club in Fort Worth, or uh, what did I say? October? Excuse me, December seventh at the Real Club in Fort Worth. Or on the 21st of December at the Curtain Club in Dallas with Rivet Head, who we will be playing momentarily. This system doesn't like me today, it happens, so, you know, hey. Um, more music until my musical guests get here. Um, they won't be playing music, they'll be talking music and whatnot. So, um, yeah, let's see what I want to play for you. Alright, now that I've figured out all my stuff for the time being, as promised, here is Rivet Head with their song Let It Go off of Zero Gravity. It can be found on iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby, and at show, so enjoy it. Do you remember me? 
All right, all right. That was Let It Go from Riverhead. Uh, that song did not say what you thought it did, which makes it that much more fun. We won't discuss what it says, but you know. Okay, anyway, um, that being said, let's get into some more music. I want to go a bit heavier with this. This is uh, a threat to the enemy from Texas, uh, Abilene, Dallas, Graham, and beyond. Uh, they were just here a few weeks ago on the 2nd of November at Reno's, and they're coming back the 24th to the Real Club as part of the Kill the Trend Festival. And they can also catch them uh, January 13th at the door as part of Winter Jamboree. So here is a threat to the enemy with point aim shoot. Enjoy it. <laughs> Dirty, dirty people of the internet world. I am, uh, obviously, if you can watch the camera feed online, which you should be able to, I am in studio now with my musical, oh, well, somewhat musical guest, Tito Lopez of the band Onward We March. Look at the camera. There's their CD. It's out soon. Two weeks. I don't know if it's my 
microphone is on. Yeah. You You're live now. A little bit, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it comes out in two weeks, actually. So. Yeah, the boiler room. Yes, sir. December 1st. December 1st. Yeah, that shows you, Color of Arm, uh, Ohm, excuse me, Color of Ohm, Bear Witness, and Enormicon. Yes. $10? $10. Um, starts at like 8. I think the first band goes on at 8.30. Color of Ohm goes on first, 8.30. And then it's a Normicon. They're from Denton. I don't know if anybody of you guys have really checked them out before. Um, I've seen the name around. <laughs> yeah, we mean. saw them at a show at Curtain Club. And uh, we three of us actually were there. Derek and Chris and I were just there. And we're like, man, this band rules. We had to have them come down here and, you know, come play with us. So they're really kind of like a, a sludgy tool, I guess, is the <laughs> best way to describe it. At least a that's sludgy what, tool. That's, the, that's what we were thinking when we heard it. And so we're like, man, that's right up our alley. And then we got Bear Witness right before us. And I don't know if you guys have heard Bear Witness. but From uh, Fort Worth, right? I believe so. Mid-Cities, Fort Worth. Yeah, the play, they practice the Inches of Mercury, which is mid-Cities out in that area. Yeah. Like, everybody in the mom is over at Inches of Mercury at this yeah, point. Yeah, so we're... Just doing all that, and then they're coming on before us th- to thrash it up, and then it'll be us, and then we're just going to, you know, try not to suck, which won't be too hard because <laughs> we don't suck. Well, now that you've gone through three drummers. Yeah, this is technically, I guess, our third drummer. Because you had Only to our second as Onward We March, <laughs> but um, yeah, this is technically Derek's and I third drummer maybe even fourth i don't even know <laughs> well, I they know. all just spontaneously combusted on us and i don't understand Spinal tap. Uh, i know when i met you I don't know, how many years ago with utd yeah. radio yeah I, i'm just gonna <laughs> say the tables have turned i'm on your show rather than you being on mine yeah welcome to my show but uh yeah it should be good times and there's people in the hallway i don't know what's going on uh, that's can what people, people hear me do. at all I can, yeah, I can hear you can, can you hear you i can barely hear my i'm gonna get my radio voice back and just talk like this again and see how to do it like that maybe that will work but yeah how you been torch i haven't seen you around i've been around just not around at the same time i mean just not around me i guess it's probably a good thing yeah you, me, you drink least. a lot huh so yeah, you know, you drink a lot. Not really. Not not lately. Oh, wait, no, that's me in my that's, bath. Yeah. That's the old me. The old you. Yeah, I've just been uh, booking and booking and working at the random venues that I can and making no money. You should start booking good bands. Just saying. I don't, I don't even know what bands you've even booked because we haven't played a show with I've you had forever, you before. So. You did me just fine, but that was years ago that before years I pissed ago. off your drummer on accident. Yeah, well, it happens. It does. It happens. So tell yeah. us about the Ocean Harvest EP. Uh, well, what do you want to know? It's three songs. It's uh, coming out December 1st. It'll be on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you can download. It's on Bandcamp right now. You can't download it, but you can definitely stream it from Bandcamp and download the first song off of it, the title track, Ocean Harvest, for free. Um, yeah, this is actually just the first... EP with uh, our new singer. We went through pretty much the same things. We went and recorded with Sterling Winfield again. Uh, had it mastered by the same guy, Mayor Applebaum. Uh, but it, it's mainly, it's a really a local CD, if you think about it. Different uh, artwork. Different artwork. It's a local artist rather than us commissioning. Um, I, f- I forget his name, but the guy, he's a, he did all the Opeth artwork. Opeth artwork and we were yeah. stoked on it. And but it's just our budget this time around wasn't as big. But I think this artwork, it, no disrespect to the guy who does Opeth's art. I mean, the guy does awesome artwork. But I think this one just took it up into a different level, especially since we're going to a different direction. And this is really, you don't see a lot of metal CDs with like blues and oranges and no. bright colors. That's not some like scene core type of stuff. But uh, yeah, we did that. We got a, we're getting all Sing our core. yeah we're getting all our shirts printed locally. We got the local art. Dan Colser, look him up. Google. He's from Transylvania. He would only meet us at night. It was really odd, really odd. Um, but yeah, um, pretty. Just three songs. Just trying to get the new singer out there, man. Because we had a CD. Can you put him on steroids or something? 
uh, well, workout plan. Well, we tried feeding him once, but it was past midnight, and that did not work out well. For those that don't know Chris, he is um, beyond skinny. He's a little boy. He's a little. He's a little. He's a. He's in his own. Yeah, he is. I can put him in my back pocket and sneak him into shows sometimes. But yeah, you know, it's cool. Yeah, definitely. Why don't we uh, go ahead and get into a song, because it's the song I have on here. While we're playing the song, I'm going to try to put it on the computer, but you know how that goes. So this is the title track, Ocean Harvest, from Onward We March, out of Dallas, Texas. Yay, yay. Here we go. Enjoy it.
Oh, we are back. We are back. We are back. Call us live in studio. 214-741-9111. We will answer all your questions and talk to you for a few minutes if you want us to. I don't want to. If they call in, you have no choice. Oh, well then. Well then. Well then, call in, well please, then, people. Guess, call yeah, us. You know. Entertain us. I mean, we're going to entertain you, but you should entertain us. I will try to entertain you. There's no guarantees on that. This is not my show. It's not, yeah, my, resp- it's not my responsibility, Torch. You know, you got to pick up, pick it up if you're going to do something. But, uh, oh, how about we play uh, some more music? Yeah, let's play some more music. Let's play some Color of Ohm. They're playing the show with us, and they're going on really early. They're playing at 8.30. Um, but they are really, really good. If I were to say you play a song, let's play Failure in Flames. That song fucking rules. I can say fucking on the radio, right? As far as I know, since this is... We said it all last week. (laughs) This is internet radio. I don't think we're sanctioned at all. Well, I used to have internet radio, and we used to not be able to say that because we were trying to be real radio. Well, you were on UTD, though. Yeah, radio. That was a college station. Radio UTD. Yeah. I would get away with it by paying some cannibal corpse and not tell, no one could understand it anyway. So, well, That's how you do it. Just like you play Napalm Death. Nobody knows what they're saying. Exactly. It's just, Speaking of Napalm Death, are you going tonight? That's tonight? That's tonight. Where? Uh, the Real Club. No, we have practice tonight, actually, at in Plano. So, no, that's not happening. Well, that makes two of us. I'm just poor. Yeah. No, I want to. Napalm Death's always fun. Uh, but, no, I'm not getting to go. Practicing for the show that's on December 1st. I don't know if you heard about that, Torch. We're playing our CD release show. You know that song that we just played? Yeah, that song that's that you just played. And Color of Ohm, this band that you're about to play, they're playing with us. So, you know, if you want to check out this song, it's called Failure in Flames by Color of Ohm. Cool dudes. You know? Yeah, very cool They give, they give great handy J's. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, here is Color in Flames by Color. Failure in Flames. Whatever. Failure in Flames by Color of Ohm. Um, they are playing December 1st by the CD at their show. Oh, Torch, did you hear that we're playing a CD release December 1st with these guys? I don't, I don't think I heard. Torch. No, but is it the Boiler Room? You know, it should be pretty cool. Yes, here it is. Music. Waste 
We are back. Hello, hello. So that was Color of Ohm with Failure in Flames. And I was just telling Torch, this thing that they're using to play all these songs is pretty cool. It tells, this is me being a music <laughs> dork right now, it tells you what key these songs are in. And I'm like, this song is in D sharp minor. I know this already because I've already talked to him. I'm like, hey, what key do you, what are you tuning in? And so I already knew it. And this shows our song in D minor. I'm like, how does it know? <laughs> how does it know these things? What kind of voodoo magic is it trying to pull on us? But, you know. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, it's a technology at its finest at this point. Yeah, I guess. But it's just. Um, I mean, you know, like when we were deep, on, when we were scary. doing your show and Brandon's show with Radio UTD, we had a lot of it that we had to put through CD and process it like that. And yeah, we would play CDs. We had CD players in our radio station. It was before we actually. And I remember they tried to put everything online on a like a, a playlist, and I was like, "No, dude, I can't do this. Like, that's too much technology. I want to be able to pick the CD and just go with it." Oh man! Speaking of CDs and technology, what do you prefer? Like when it comes down to you're at a show, seeing your favorite band, and there's obviously a band before and after for the most part. You're like, oh my god, these guys are fucking awesome! I want your music. Do you want to go digital or do you want physical copies to have it signed and be a fanboy? See, I'm old school. I like like the artwork. I like the the liner notes and like actually buying the cd it's something physical that i can hold and to me that it just there's a value to that i guess more of a physical value and i'm like hey look what i have you know i'm i'm still the kind of guy that goes out to record stores and buys records like vinyl records so uh, to me like buying something (laughs) digitally is just weird to me man because like then it's only there because my ipod broke years ago and i never replaced it so i don't have a way to kind of oh shit hold on we have a caller hold on hold on someone's calling hello you're on the air hey well hey who is this lindsey well what's going on lindsey i'm with torch and uh tito uh not much relaxing for the most part. Relaxing. Yeah. It's fun to do when you don't have to be at a radio show for two hours. I'm relaxing, too. You can't see me. I'm off camera, but I'm... But oh, I'm no, scared. you're on camera. Oh, damn it. I can't lie. <laughs> so, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Um, hey, Tito. Yes. I have a question for what's you. What's up? What's with the, um... Eat a dick on your guitar? <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, Tito. Um... That actually goes back a couple years. Um, we were playing a show somewhere, like Wichita Falls or something. And it was a show where the, it was like a bunch of hardcore kids, like kid kids that were just there to see a bunch of breakdowns. Yeah. And I caught the vibe of the, the whole show the whole time. And like so before we went on, I just wrote Eat a Dick on the back of my guitar with some duct tape. That's nice. Because I was like, well... Let's just trick them. So, like, the whole time we were warming up, we did all these breakdown type of things and all that. Yeah, we're going to fucking mosh. And then we come on, and we don't have breakdowns. No, you don't. And so they got really mad at us, and so I just told them to eat a dick. I don't know. That's really it. Another, uh, I hate to interrupt you, Lindsay. Question for Tito. Booty shorts? Oh, the booty shorts. Yeah, those are... Have those been retired? Um... No, I wore them the other night because I ran out of underwear. Um, but they haven't necessarily been retired, but they're not really necessarily seeing... You know, they're not in active duty either. They're kind of like on the, you know, the National Guard, how they're there if you need them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like that right now. It, it, for those that don't know, Tito has these really bright red booty shorts that he'll play with every once in a blue moon. It's they're like, American Apparel. They're very nice. They're nice and soft. Thank you. They're great. They're <laughs> very comfortable. I, I think the first time that I saw them, you caught me off guard with it, and I was like, what is he? Oh, I think God. it was for Dave's mom's birthday. Yes, it was. Know. It was Dave's mom's birthday. Uh, she came out to her show, and we're like, it's Dave's mom's birthday. And what we've done, I don't know why, but we always give Dave a hard time. Because he's a drummer? Because he's a drummer, exactly. He might spontaneously combust on us, and we won't know. When we'll get to make fun of them next. So, 
you know, she came out. It was her birthday. And it was in between songs. I ran off stage, took off my pants, and there I was in booty shorts, dancing around for Dave's mom. It was good times. <laughs> Any other questions, Lindsay? Um, no, not really. All right. Well, thank you so much, and have a fabulous hey, day. Hey, Lindsay, did you know that they're playing on December 1st? Yes, I did. Hey, Torch, did you know that we're playing on December 1st? I had no clue. Oh, well then. Tell us more about that, Tito. Well, it's us and Bear Witness and Color of Omen and Normicon. It should be a blast. It's actually the day before my birthday, so hopefully I can play the songs that night. Because, yeah. Yeah. Dangerous. Because right now I'm dangerous. Yeah, I had to go there. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, thank you for calling, Lindsay. So if, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you later. So anybody else wants to call in, the number is 214-741-9111. If you call in during a song, I will not answer the phone. But thank you for listening to the Torch Metal Show with Torch and uh, Tito today from Honorary March. Phone goes back on mute. Time for more music. How about some uh, Ghostbusters influence? With a song you call Vigo. Yeah. This song's by us. It's called Vigo. And us meaning Onward Remarch. It also says it's in D minor. Which, I guess it is. What does it say about Bridges Will Burn? Bridges Will Burn is in D sharp minor. And apparently there's Runes to the Evening song is in G minor. And then the search of, In Search of Sight song is F sharp minor. I will have to ask those guys and see... <laughs> if that is true or not, it's right for our stuff so far, for the most part, even though... Hey, you guys Vigo, an F-sharp minor? Vigo is really... It's not straight D minor. There's some weird stuff in there. It's more like a diminished whatever, you know. But, you know, I'll take it. Hey, is Derek still playing custom basses? Yes. As he should be. Yes, he builds his own basses. He's a nerd like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have him reconstruct one of my old guitars. My first guitar, I have a Fernandez <laughs> oh, that I God. got when I was 17. Oh, God. I gutted it out, and I'm gonna go buy a pickup and just slap it in there. It's just gonna be a volume knob, and it's just be like, let's go. Metal. You, you should have something put on there. Like you should have "Eat a Dick" on there as a permanent. No, that's just for the one guitar. Oh, okay, that one and guitar. I've been thinking about removing it. I'm not really too sure yet, but we'll see how it happens. Let's go ahead and play the song if you're going to play a song. Yeah, let's play it. Here let's we go. Do it. We go. Do it to it.
Womp, womp, womp. Apparently there's this little... Oh, something's oh, happening. What? There's like this little soundboard thing that we're trying to play with, but it does not work it at all. Like it doesn't like Torch. So it's like everybody else. It just doesn't like Torch. I'm um, not likable at times. That happens. Here's some stuff by Bear Witness that we're hoping will load off of Reverb Nation. They're opening, playing right before us on December 1st. I don't know if you heard about that, Torch. We're playing a show December 1st with I Bear heard. Witness and Enormicon and uh, Color of Ohm. We've already listened to Color of Ohm. But let's see if we can play some uh, Bear Witness. Some Beer Witness. It's loading, at least. Beer Witness. That's what's going to be... The nickname for everybody that night. Beer witness. Is it loading? It's trying to play. You might want to turn up the volume on it, but you know. This song is supposed to be called The Loyalty of Desperation, but we're getting pretty desperate to trying to get it to play. <laughs> um, let me tell you a story. There was once a boy named Brian, and then all of a sudden people start going on torch, and no one really knows why. No one really cares. It was really awkward. That's my awkward story for everybody. Thank you, Tito. And if Torch, if you want to message some more of your friends to call in and ask me random questions that you're too afraid to ask, you know, you can do that again too. Well, I wasn't afraid to ask. It felt like somebody else should ask it. It's you know. more funny coming from some other random motherfucker than besides me. Exactly. No, it's it's cool. It's cool. I guess. But we're trying to play a song. We're going to do the YouTube, you Tizzle, YouTube's, the YouTube's. <laughs> um, see if we can get a little up a song there. Uh, I'm just trying to talk as much as i can this there it is right there loyalty of desperation see if we can actually play it here it's a pretty killer song by this band called bear witness and uh i don't know if this is actually the song it's just the opening track so here it goes Oh, 
That was pretty heavy, actually. It's pretty good. Good stuff, man. So, preview of what's going on. Um, we might try to pull up an Enormicon song here in a minute on the YouTubes as well. I mean, we will, probably after some eye sauce action, though. Yeah, I don't know what you just said, but that's cool. Eye sauce in search of say, you know. Oh, I thought you talk. I was hungry, so I was like, what kind of sauce? <laughs> Jack Daniel's sauce. I'm hungry, too. Don't get me wrong. I could use some food. So, you know. Here we go. Some, uh. No, not yet. Actually, I got a, I got a question for you. What's up? What are your thoughts on what I'm going to consider, you know, quote, unquote, buddy bands? Bands that constantly play together every other fucking show that they can. Oh, you mean like us and like Color of Home and like us and like Giant of the Mountain or us and Bearing the Trends? Well, Is that what you're trying to get at? No, actually. Say? No, I mean, I've seen that combination <laughs> before here and there. But it's not like every other fucking show. It's we'll yeah. play when we can because um, we're all friends. But yeah, and I think that's what we try to go. We love all those bands, and I think from a a, a marketing standpoint of trying to gain new fans, it's not good to play with the exact same show. Because I mean, it, it when people go out to shows, it's like I just saw the exact same lineup a month ago. Like there's just no variation. I like all those bands, but it's just kind of like. I'm not going to get a new experience, especially if those bands don't change up their set list or anything like that. There's not a lot of variation. You, it's just like watching Ghostbusters and then turning a ride around and playing it again from the beginning. Actually, that sounds like a great idea. Um, <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> but it, like we, we, I think it's good to have a, a group of bands to just kind of pull from and just say, hey, we, these are the bands that just kick ass. And we want to play with these bands all the time and just have a couple of them on the show and just keep a rotating door of all these bands that we know, A, you know, will pull their weight as far as promotion and will pull their weight as far as putting on a show and pull their weight as far as just being a kick-ass band as far as musically, you know? So I, with us, the buddy band syndrome, I guess, if you want to call it that. It's cool. I mean, you get some sort of consistency. You get some so you get to know those two bands really well. Um, it's kind of like like getting a two for one deal. But if it's the same lineup every show, that's when it starts becoming a problem. I think. Yeah, I mean, I agree. There's bands like Riverhead and Visible Dolls who play together once every few months. They're friends. They know each other. They love each other. They have fun together. But it's not like Riverhead's in town. So it's a Blade Dolls, same show. If it hits in town, we just Blade Dolls, same show. It's, I think they're doing it twice next month. By pure coincidence, I'm sure. Yeah. No, it's cool. I don't see anything wrong with it. I well, just I think, don't see anything wrong with it, per se. I but just think I, there's a lot of other bands to play with. And as far as if you want to expand your own fan base. But yeah, when, 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 when three out of five shows is with two bands. Yeah. The same two bands. Three times out of five, it's... Oh, I've seen you before. Yeah, and it, it, you also got to play it right. You can't go out and just play with just some random band. We played a show with um, a couple hard rock bands at Boiler Room. We were kind of put on in the midnight slot or the 1 o'clock spot or something like that. It was a cool show for what it was. Not necessarily any show that I would have gone to personally to pay money for because mm. it's just not my, it's not my kind of music. But we're kind of, we kind of fit, I guess. I don't know. We could fit into that show, but it's just one of those things that didn't work out for us. Um, probably won't do play, it again. Play, well, I don't know if we play with that exact lineup. Maybe one or two of those bands, like the heavier ones, if they were, if we were playing right before them rather than the other way around, because they seem to have a better, I guess, a, a bigger pool as regards to what was going on that night. We didn't really get a chance to really promote that show as like we wanted to, but. Uh, you know, well, that happens a lot, unfortunately. Like yeah. sometimes, as a promoter in a venue owner, is like, "Oh, I had a band drop off. I need to just kind of fill their shoes with whatever I can." Yeah. Hey, you guys want to do a show? Okay. Yeah, and it, it really, really wasn't our show. It was just a show we were playing, and so it was just kind of awkward for us, I guess. Oh yeah, I, I totally understand how that can be awkward. I guess I don't know, but you know, we just kind of go with it. Just go with it. 
So what's next on the lineup here, Torchy? What are you going to play next? What are you going to play next? I thought you were going to play some sauce for us. Yeah, actually, I'm going to play... My eyesight's going to shit, apparently. It happens. What are we playing? What are we playing? Stagnation. Stagnation by In Search of Sight. And I heard that they did a great job. Is this the band that played... Born of Osiris. With, with Born of Osiris? Yes, I, I didn't yes. get a chance to make it, but I heard they did a great job. So. Um, again, it goes back to me being fucking broke. It was a, a $20 show that I didn't have $20 for. Yeah, I didn't, well, pay, I didn't pay money to get in. I had $20 for but I didn't have $20 plus beer money. And beer money is the most important money there is at this point. I got a hookup, so I was able to go. So I wanted to go see Unearth. How were they? It was great. I mean, it's Unearth. It's, they play Oncoming Storm pretty much straight through and then play a couple other songs off the other albums but it's it's good times man it made, it's one of those stepping stone bands that I got into first and so it was fun for me that's all oh, that Lord. matters so uh, in search of sight right now on the torch metal hold show hold on before we play it I lied not can right we, now can we have an awkward pause we can alright you can play it thank you That was the remix, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened in that bullshit. That must have been the, the, the remix. They're pretty good, man. I've never actually had sat down and actually listened to them. Um, kind of wish I would have talked to them that night. I didn't get a chance to catch them because I got there kind of late. Got there right before Bay of the Brave started playing. but uh, That was late for that show, yes. Yeah, it was an early start to the show. I think there's already like three shows that three bands had gone on at that point. But... uh. Yeah, dude. If any of them are listening, hit me up. We should play a show together sometime. That'd be awesome. But uh, what else, Torch? What else you want to talk about? I've always thought of them as the band that the bands hate because they're so fucking awesome. It's like, we love you, but fuck. No, the band that I hate that I think is fucking awesome is Giant of the Mountain. Cody, every time he plays a solo, I want to hit him in the face because I'm like, you, no one should be that good at guitar. It's just ridiculous. And then Randy on drums, like she's like, yeah, I just started playing drums a year ago. I'm like, what? <laughs> How is this possible? You're just like shredding it up. But uh, yeah, man. What do we got? What else do we got going on? We got Torch. 
Oh, I mean, Torch, did I tell you that we're playing a show on December 1st at the Boiler Room with Bear Witness and, and Ormicon and you Color Bone? You did. No, oh, I just want to make sure. I forget. Obviously. I forget these things. I just want to make sure that I tell you. Um, but yeah, you know, you can just sit here awkwardly if you'd like. Let's play some old school fucking Dallas metal. How old school? Like, you mean like Pantera old school? No. Before or like uh, Rigor Mortis old school? Not quite that old school. You mean like beginning of this millennium old school? Like within the last 15 years? Yeah, within the last 12 years kind of thing? Yeah, within the last 12 years old. Like Destro? Yes. Type of stuff? Yes. Or are you going to play the Destro? I'm going to play the Destro. All right, let's do that. That'd be cool. This is uh, Bridges Will Burn off of their debut as the Coil Unwinds. It was originally self-released by the band before they got signed to... Um, Ironclad. Thank you. I think this is the owners. better of the two albums, in my opinion. That's the only one I had. Um, when I was at Radio UTD, we got a copy of it, um, as well as we got copies of... Uh, I forget the label that was based out of here that had Jackknife and... Uh, Dry line. That one, yeah. Yeah, I forget the name of the label. But, uh, yeah, those three bands were pretty big here in the area as far as metalcore, I guess, if you want to label it. Metal. Fuck the metal. labels. So, you know. But that whole scene in the early 2000s, that kind of broke out. and I miss all three of those bands, actually. They were great bands. I, I remember seeing Jackknife about two years ago. Um, they did a comeback show for Halloween two years ago. And they hadn't played a show since. <laughs> hey, uh, we're back. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, and I, 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 I keep messaging Joe randomly because I know I was like, Joe dude, Knife? They, yeah. So I was just like, dude, you're back, right? And they're like, oh, no, kind of not really. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, let me know. It's like in a sense we had that one show, but that was it. And that's, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. Bridges Will Burn, The Destro. All righty.
technology at its finest. Again, that was a remix. It's the remix, man. Yeah, man. It's the remix. Speaking of old school Dallas metal, have you heard that there is a band that broke up a couple years ago that's actually coming back? Actually paid their a reunion type of shows, I guess, at uh, a show the other day in North Dallas for uh, the Ruben. I don't know if you knew about Ruben. Um, I didn't ever meet Ruben, but, but I know Ruben. who he is and yeah. all that. Yeah, and yeah. they had a benefit show for him. For those who don't know, Ruben was a drummer for a couple bands here. Uh, and he was unfortunately shot and, and killed. Um I don't know the rest of it, but I know a lot of friends of mine were really close to him. He was at a strip club. Yeah. Well, he worked at La Bear. He was at a different strip club. I know, but that (laughs) was his profession, so I don't know what he was doing or anything. Not my place to speculate, really, or do anything, but I just know he was shot and killed, and there was a benefit show, and at that show, there was a local metal band that had broken up a couple years ago that made... Their first show in like two years. Tyler Berry. Tyler Berry. My son, Executioner. My son, Executioner. I can go ahead and reveal this now. Return show January twelfth at Reno's. Yep. Awesome. Who all is playing that show? My son. That's all I know. That's, that's all he. G- <laughs> we <laughs> talked the other day. He called me about the show, and we negotiated details. And it's like, okay, yeah, we'll do it. I'll get you more info. They're going to blow out the speakers there. That's Tyler Berry fashion, though. He has something in the works. It's probably confirmed for the most part. It's just let me get everything on the down and get you all the necessary information. Yeah, this should be pretty cool. Good times, man. Good times. Good times. What are we looking at here, Torch? What are you looking to do? One of my good friends did a couple album reviews for me for the show that we're doing right now. Yeah. And I'm trying to import them into our uh, virtual DJ system. Well, while we're doing that, let's listen to another band. Um, hey, here's a, uh, a good band to play right now. It's actually Chris's old band, Sever the Senses. I see you have some music by them. I do. Let's play some of that. Oh, I do. Let's play okay. Sever the Senses. Uh, Chris, our singer, used to be their singer. Um, what happened there? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, Chris is with us. They were, they were a good band. I remember we played a show with them, and they were really freaking cool so let's listen to a song by them here i see it right there they click the little plus sign there and uh you know well we'll listen to something like that maybe it'll be something with chris on it maybe it won't be i don't know how old these are art but i think these are the newer ones so it's not chris yeah these are like the last two albums yeah Speaking of Sever the Senses, since you brought them up, December 22nd at Tomcats is their last Dallas show. Oh, what's going on? They decided to pack up and move to Austin to further their career. Oh, right on. They they all love Dallas, but Dallas isn't doing a whole lot for them, so they're going to give Austin a try and see what happens in Austin. Well, good luck to them. That'd be awesome. We were trying to play a show with them, but never worked out. That happens. Yeah. So this is Pictures and Pictures by Sever the Senses. It's off of their new album, which I forget the name of because I'm stupid like that. Oh, it's off of um, Polluting the Minds of Millions. See, I don't dream big. I just try to pollute one mind at a time. So this is Pictures and Pictures by Sever the Senses. Check them out. Uh, they're on Facebook, SoundCloud, and uh, December 22nd, Tomcats West. Fort Worth, but this is pictures and pictures. God damn it, play. Play a song, play. Come 
Alright, this is the end of Show of the Senses. I love it when bands do that very, very subtle instrumental notation in the song that you don't even get to hear. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for those of you that don't give a fuck, Tito has so to go eat and go to band practice, so he will be leaving the studio at this point. Yeah, so it was a good time. Thanks for having me, Torch. And uh, oh, It was a pleasure, Tito. Don't forget, um, December 1st, Boiler Room, us. Oh, oh, and wait, uh, I have to interrupt you. What's up? Tito Lopez has an album out right now. You can buy his album in stores and in iTunes. Oh, yeah. Tito Lopez, the rapper. Yeah. <laughs> Check that guy out. He's actually pretty good. I get tweets from, from his fans all the time. Actually, I got one earlier today saying something. Do you have that, it? Do you have it? Um, let me see. Yeah, I guess the new album's called The Blues. And this is listening to Tito Lopez's newest mixtape called The Lost Files of Tito Lopez. Classic hip hop to the fullest. Salute. I was like, cool. I didn't reply to him. I, I used to reply and say, hey, thanks. But apparently I have some lost files out there. Hopefully it doesn't have my social security number in it or anything like that. But you know. The things you find on Twitter, just Tito, Tito Lopez, the rapper, has a different name that he uses. No, he's for, real Tito Lopez. Yeah, real. I'm the fake one, apparently. But yeah, I'm just Tito Lopez on there, so... I get his fans tweeting me all the time. It's awesome. And you retweet it because you can. And I tan yeah, I'll, if I'm I don't I'm not really too active on Twitter too much these days, but if I do see something that I'm like, Yep, That's I'll right. retweet it and say that was me. <laughs> Swag. Exactly. But yeah. But yeah, it was a pleasure having you on yeah, here. Definitely. So it's kinda cool, kinda weird not being in control of the radio show when, with you in the room. But, you know, it's not my show anymore. I don't do that anymore. But good luck to this. That's because you do what I can't do and play guitar Yeah. in a band. Yeah, it's not the only thing I do that you can't do, Torch. Let's, not be, let's be honest here. But, you know. You're also more Mexican than I am. If that helps any. Yeah, because you're only half. If, if that. If that. <laughs> or something. I forget. I forget which side of your family is. But, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, good night. Had good good night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. December yeah. 1st, Boiler Room. Come see Boiler them. Room, yeah. so bear witness and uh, Enormicon and uh, Color of Home. It should be good times. And uh, you should download some Enormicon so you can play them, too. But, you know. Maybe one day. Maybe one day we'll get them on here. And uh, you have a review of an album, right? Yeah. This is uh, my friend Anita. She was a co-host on uh, a show that I used to be somewhat associated with a few months ago. I'm not going to name their names because I don't want to plug them. But uh, I asked her to give me a couple reviews for some fucking badass albums. And uh, this is the first one. So this is uh, Ken Mode from Canada. So check this out. This is her review. And after that, I'll actually throw in some Ken Mode for you because I can. So check this out. Hello, this is Anita giving you a quick album review of the week. Uh, the album that I'm talking about today is actually an older album released in 2011 from Ken Mode. It's called Venerable, and I honestly cannot recommend this album enough. Uh, I had originally bought it when it was first released, gave it a few spins, and at first there wasn't anything that immediately left an impression on me to the point that uh, after the first few listens, I put it up on the shelf and had nearly forgot about it. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they played a local show here, and in preparation, I pulled the album down from the shelf, gave it some more listens, and 
honestly, the few months of ignoring it really breathed new life into the record. Uh, if you didn't know, Ken Mode is a three-piece metal band from Canada. It's comprised of Jesse Mathewson on vocals and guitar, Shane Mathewson on drums, and Chad Trembla on bass and vocals. What really struck me is the first track on the album, which is called Book of Muscle, starts out with this really heavy, grating bass line that just really draws you in, and it prepares you for something that's either going to be really good or really bad. Uh, it's a great opener for the album that gives you a little bit of a taste of what you're in for throughout the whole thing, because you're going to be going through highs and lows throughout the album, melodic, heavy, touches of punk. It, it just really has everything that I think a good album should. So as you continue through the pa um, through the tracks on the album, you you just have these quiet parts where you almost feel like you're tr sitting there in trepidation, looking over your shoulder like someone's going to be coming up and stabbing you in the back. But when it really picks up, you just find yourself uncontrollably feeling like you're getting pumped up for a fight or something's going to happen. Uh, what, the gem on this record for me was the track Never Was. And for me, it really solidly combines the quiet with the loud. Uh, what Kenmo does really beautifully on this particular song is that the quiet is not just a hushing of the band that fills you with good feelings, but it's this loud quiet that's interjected with the powerful hit of a snare drum, that, which to me, instead of using a tom, is genius, and it really hits home what the album is about. Um, but the way it just goes from whispers to screams in a seamless manner. I just, once again, it is my favorite song on the album. Uh, the whole album could really just be a track for a horror movie or the zombie apocalypse with the way it goes up and down. But either way, it's definitely worth giving a listen to if you've never heard of Ken Mode before. I can highly recommend going to YouTube. Look it up. They've been around since 1999. And like I said, everything they do, I just love it. Um, as far as the live show went, <laughs> there's only one word that can come to mind, and it's loud. Um, I read a few words of advice from people before going to the show, and they recommended earplugs. Being the hard head that I am, I ignored this advice and pretty much lost my hearing for a few days. But it was truly a, an awesome experience. And for any guys that are trying to entice their ladies to go to the show, the drummer does play nothing but boxers, so not only do you get a good show, you get music and a show. <clears throat> so that really does it for this week. Next week I'm going to be covering another oldie but goodie uh, from Black Tusk. So I will talk to you all then. All right, all right. That was my friend Anita's Ken Mode review. I um, fucked up and did not bring the album with me to play. So there will be no album, but look them up. You can find them on Bandcamp, actually. So if you just Google Ken Mode, there's a link for their Bandcamp page. That's where I bought their album, and you can buy it there, too. It's a really good album. It's nice and heavy. It's on my iPhone, but that won't do us any good. So uh, I have about 30 minutes left in the show, and I'm going to turn it down just a bit as far as the heaviness goes. Um, bring it back to the rock sign, because we do play nothing but... Well, we do play rock and metal, so... Enough metal for the day, let's bring it back to some rock. This is Admiral Gray from Oklahoma. They just released their debut CD, The Long Road. This is the opening track, Pulling Strings, from Admiral Gray. <coughs>
All right, all right, all right. That was Adam Gray from Oklahoma. You might know that voice. That is uh, Aaron Pose, formerly of Faction fame. He was the second frontman of Faction before they decided to slowly call it quits. He was also in Paper Chase with Christian, who is now the other guitar player with Admiral Gray. Pure, uh, pure, I don't know, not even coincidence, really, because they always stayed in touch, but you know. Again, if you're listening online, I don't think anybody is, but if you are, phone lines are open, 214-741-9111. This is uh, currently live. It will not be live after we end the show. It'll be on YouTube at that point, so if you're watching this on YouTube, don't call in. There's no point. Um, Why am I even... Yeah. Now that the camera's fixed and back to me... Let's get back to it. This is uh, Dawn Over Zero from Austin, Texas with their song Circulation off of the Dawn Over Zero EP.
Again, that was Dawn Over Zero from Austin, Texas with their song Circulation off of the Dawn Over Zero EP. Um, you can get it at shows, it's on iTunes, it's, uh, yeah, you know, everywhere you can need it to be. Uh, while I'm on talking, now I want to give a shout out to my good friend Ryan Maynard, who is the new guitar player of Early Pearl. They are back in action in just a few short weeks, December 15th, Saturday the 15th of December at Trees in Dallas, Texas with the commotion in Black Sky. It's only $10. They go on around 11.30 or so, maybe midnight, but it'll be a great show to come out to early pro getting back together for hopefully the future. You never know with them, though. <coughs> ah. Again, excuse my voice. It's not what I want it to be, but what are you going to do? This weather change doesn't help any. Let's keep it going with a little regional action. This is a band called Colossus of Roads from Lubbock. I played them on my last show two weeks ago. Obviously, that show was a Friday, and this is a Sunday, um, only because I could not be here on Friday due to obligations with the studio manager having to be out of town, but that's not anybody's fault. So this is Colossus of Roads. I'm going to tell you what the song is afterwards, so maybe you can figure it out until then.
<laughs> alright, 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 that was Colossus of Rhodes. That was their cover of I Just Died In Your Arms Tonight. The original is not great. This one is so much better. It's so much harder and uh, more fun, funner. And it's great live. Again, phone lines are open 214-741-9111. Call in if you want. Until then, more music. Let's go. New music from Cage 9. This is with the lights out off of the album How to Shoot Lasers from Your Eyes. They were just here in October, put on a great show. We'll hopefully be back again next year and um, put on a better show. So enjoy this while you can. Good body, good. 
All right. Obviously, that was two songs. The first one was uh, Cage Nine, and then that was Rivet Ted yet again. I love them so much. I played them twice. That was Super Zero off of the album Optimism from Doomsday. We have five minutes left in the show today. I'm going to end it with one more song. This is the Samus Theory from Phoenix, Arizona with their cover of Pure by Gary Coleman. I believe that's right. If not, oh well. This is Pure by the Samus Theory. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thank you guys for listening in. This is the Torch Metal Show. I am done for the day. Join us back in two weeks. More information will be on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Torch Entertainment Dallas. Thank you again. This is the Torch Metal Show on Deep Lemon on Air. I am your host, Torch. Thank you. Good night.
save. There, Greg. I just didn't see it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. See, we got a new guy about to do, redo our website, and so I guess fell through the cracks. Yeah. I mean, we're having a whole different website, but let me make sure it's at least. Stop! Stop! Fuck! Okay. I haven't even saved tonight yet, so. 